Welcome to the New Life Behavior International video cast and podcast series. Presented by volunteer instructors, the New Life Behavior International series is presented in countries globally and in several on the African continent. Courses are available on nlbi.co.za and is absolutely free of charge. However, donations are welcome and completely voluntary. The core curriculum is a comprehensive study to discover a meaningful and personal relationship with God, with the objective to help individuals from all walks of life to be reconciled to God, reconciliation to families and society. The curriculum contains 174 lessons divided into 14 courses and is well received by both Christians and non-Christians alike. All the lessons are available on our website nlbi.co.za and you may communicate via email info at nlbi.co.za The outline of the curriculum is explained by volunteer instructor Oscar de Vries. These lessons will cover the following A sense of self A sense of family Parenting matters True freedom Christian marriage skills, Christian women, attitudes and behaviors, Christians against substance abuse, is a family net series, the seeker Bible study series, prisoners of Christ, managing my anger, Christians against sex addiction, managing my finance. In this way we say welcome to New Life Behavior Ministries. Hello everybody. Dag allemaal. Welkom hier bij ons bij New Life Behavior. Welcome to our next video cast of New Life Behavior and we're in lesson 8B and it's the lesson or the course that is called Christians Against Sex Addiction. Probably the most difficult of all the courses because of its sensitivity and we want to share with you our, our compassion in this. Not our understanding because sometimes I don't think we or I could understand, but to say that we are passionate and compassion, we show compassion for you and, and, and with the hope that Christ and God will be able to contribute, be close to you in a recovery from your particular addiction. Never forget the organizations that are there to support, mentors, people that are prepared to stand up and help you. So welcome along with Unlock Radio Live who uh, facilitate and help us with these uh, video casts and we hope it will be of some benefit to you. You can always just go along to the website nlbi.net or nlbi.co.za look at the study materials, look at the video casts that are uploaded and, and use this in any way. And if you need help or that, get hold of us. Use our contact numbers and contact details and we would be glad to assist. Now today we are going to go into lesson nine. We, you know, we've talked about giving up. We've talked about waking up. And we've talked about turning our lives around, taking stock of our lives, really being brutally honest with ourselves maybe. And then that we want to own up to what we our addiction is. And then to say, I'm, I want to clean up my house. I'm not ashamed anymore to tell people where I am and what I plan to do. And then to, to get this, if we use the word rubbish out of our lives, if we can, and I don't mean that insensitively. And then to make that list we talked about last time of people that you feel that you've offended, the private list. We'll talk about how we can apply that. But we do realize that that could be extremely 
sensitive, particularly with sex addiction. But always remember that the fundamental grounding of new life behavior is that in Christ, I'm a new creature. The old is gone and the new has come. So we, we face the question here in lesson nine. It says, what do you think it means to make direct amends to such people wherever possible, except when to do so would injure them or others? That's fundamentally, in a nutshell, everything. Who can, wherever possible, but we do not want to cause injury. We do not want to cause injury to those people and to others. Now, if we haven't worked through step eight, which is the list of names, you can't go on with this lesson because this lesson talks about moving on from that point. So that's not against you. It's just a fact. The, the sequence is to go forward. And, you know, Matthew chapter 5 says to us, if, 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 we have, if we come to God and we want to pray, we want to present ourselves to God, he said, you know, if you remember something that you've got against somebody else, the recommendation is go and make things right. And, and if somebody's angry with you or you're mutually angry with each other, go and make that right. Now, you must know that they're going to be in making things right, they're going to be definite, different reactions or responses. Some people say, yeah, yeah, okay, whatever, whatever. They don't take us seriously. And you may even be laughed at in today's world. You know, everybody's doing this. But, what, but, but remember, laughter is often a method of covering up pain and guilt and that is not about this is not about anybody else's recovery this is about your recovery and other people might say man i don't even know what you're talking other people say you haven't changed come on now. you're no different you'll never change you might feel totally rejected but that's a reality i regret is part of the whole process and then there are those people who say thank you i appreciate the change i see in you you're coming to me like this helps me put everything behind me so i don't carry bitterness around and ill toward you you know this is about you this is about your recovery and put, you must put forth your best effort to make each amend. And it takes an enormous amount of motivation and courage and energy to get started making things right with people we have hurt or injured in the past. And we may be closer right now to making amends than we've ever been in our entire lives now we want to talk about injury and causing harm particularly in this course be careful at this point don't be too quick and it might hurt or injure others which we've stressed already if we try to make amends and that because of the extremely sensitive nature and implications of this addiction. In other words, we should at least, before we take any action on the, any list that we may make, that we've got to speak to our sponsors, or if we're with CASA, we, whoever our sponsors and our, sh our shelter is, to put it that way, or our mentors, we need to do the, everything in conjunction, and the church for that matter, even elders of the church, and we must take great care and we must be truly motivated by considering what's best for others rather than myself 
in certain cases. You know, timing is everything in making amends. If you try to make amends while the wound is still open and bleeding, you're inviting disaster. And we do better and feel better later if we spend time with our mentors and our support groups and, and members of the church that we, we, we might be uh, attending, their wisdom helps us to properly direct our steps towards greater healing for us and for others. But do everything possible to accomplish nothing but good in making amends. This involves not only what we say, but also how we say it. If we are careless, we find ourselves making amends for making amends. Now, there are various ways of making amends. Obviously, the first one would be face-to-face. -face. These are options, but you have to, we have to consider which is the best, if any. Or today, we've got video calling. We've got voice notes. We've got messaging. We've got chats. We've got Instagram. And obviously not public uh, forums, for sure. I would say definitely not. And so we can even write a letter, which is maybe not that fashionable anymore. But we can send a card. We can send emails. But also sometimes the written items like cards or emails don't always solicit the response that we want or to know that the, the amend has been made, so to speak. And also, we've got to also think that sometimes we've got to take action. In other words, there must be some type of restitution in, in making amends. Sometimes we've, we, we need to return money. We need to return things we borrowed. We need to take things that we pawned or stole. We need to repair damage that we caused. So sometimes it's not just talking our way into amending, sometimes we've got to go further. But finally, when all is thought through, take everything to God in prayer. As we've said, God says, in everything, come to me with prayer, petition, and thanksgiving. And then he says, I'll listen to that. And then he talks about this peace that we're talking about when we've cleared these things out of our lives. I want to say that um, this is a, um, a difficult journey we're making. In other words, making amends is not easy. But we need to say to each other that mended people make amends. And the blood of Jesus cleansed you in obedience to the gospel. And if you are forgiven, the message is to forgive. Mended. If you're mended, you make amends. It works from the inside out. In days ahead, you'll help others, even strangers, who are just starting on this journey. And you can tell them how you walk this way, what work what failed, and so forth. And also, if you get to the stage, your self-respect, your self-esteem will just grow and grow. And these steps become now your new way of living. I want to move on to lesson 10 now. And lesson 10 in course 8b is an encouragement for us to, it, it, it's got a title called, I stay as sharp as a tap, but what it's really saying is that we need to just have an awareness, a very acute awareness of the journey that we're on. It must be an awareness that enables us to, to, to take an, a personal inventory, a stock take of our lives, and to do it often which is good every day to reflect, even if you're not happy with exactly how things have worked for you. But take stock, take stock. And, and 
this step 10, you know, this lesson 10 talks about we're at an intensity level now where we, we, we've got to be careful not to level out or to level off. And in other words, we mustn't think now the battle's won. We, we, we're making amends and our battle is won and it's all over and here we go. He's saying we've made considerable progress, but the crisis, and we might say, well, the crisis is no longer at its peak. But we've got to be careful that we don't let ourselves down or let our defenses down and relax our guard. This is a life struggle. It's a life's journey like many things. And we need to be aware of that. In other words, you know, living without a fulfilling uh, runaway sexual desire is almost like, walk, like walking on water like Peter did in, in the uh, Matthew chapter 14. It, 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 excuse the, the comparison. But in other words, sexual desire is a fundamental human aspect and living without fulfilling sexual relationship, unless by personal choice, as Paul says, some decide never to marry or become sexually involved as such. Um, but to live without that is a massive, it's a huge temptation and exposure if such is a part of your addiction. And, and it requires strength from the highest power. That's the important part here. You know, in Peter's struggle, we, we know about the story of Peter. As they went out onto the lake, the, the disciples, and there was this huge, this massive storm that took place. And when Jesus came walking on the water, Peter said to him, Lord, can I come to you? And the Lord said, yes, come. And what happened is Peter got out of the boat and he walked on the water. But what happened when he took his eyes off Jesus, he started to sink and he said, Lord, save me. Now, the important part of the story is keeping our eyes on Jesus. But the important part of this story is when we look at verse 31 of Matthew 14, it shows how Christ responds when we deal with our particular addiction. And if we use Peter walking on the water as our, as our, 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 our um, measuring point, as our measure, it says that Christ responds and said he reacted immediately. He reached out to Peter and he caught Peter. And that's what I would like to stress, is that to deal with and to resist our our sexual addiction we've got to use every resource we have we've got to look at it with the intensity that jesus looked at peter who watched him but when he took his eyes off him he had to reach out to save him and that tells me this story tells us that we must be valuable to god and god does everything possible to save us and to keep us safe and that's why the book of Hebrews, whoever wrote the book, we don't surely know, but Hebrews chapter 12, verses 2 and 3 said, let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and the perfecter of our faith. And he said, for whom or who for the joy set before him endured the cross, the scorning, the shame, and he sat down at the right hand of God of the throne of God. And it says, consider him who endured such opposition from sinful men so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Jesus went before us. And then the message here is the appeal that New Life makes is fix your eyes on Jesus. And the message is also to check our vision. You know, a good 12-step uh, support group and sponsor helps us. These sponsors and help groups and the Lord's power 
his, his super divine power helps us. But ultimately, the responsibility for our vision belongs to each of us. And if we keep on keeping on, we will arrive at step 12. We will be able to challenge ourselves to reach out to others that find themselves captive in the same position. If we are going to be able to assist them, we must have clear and we must have full vision. You know, we need honest input just to go back to our sponsor and our mentors and our guides we need honest input from them and we 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 need to develop the ha habit of looking into lots of mirrors and God provides us with lots of mirrors through others who give us honest reflections and that's something that we also got to find in our lives that we get honest reflections so the message here is develop the good habit of confessing and praying for one another, for healing. That's James chapter 5 and 16. That's the essence of being a Christian, is that we say we want to stay healed. We want to maintain our vision. In other words, you become the person the rest of us want to go for encouragement. And then as we draw this to, slowly to a close, we say don't let the... the if you've done something wrong, deal with it immediately. And important things deal with it more than immediately. Don't let the sun, as the, as the word of God says, set on, on, on things. Don't let Satan get the tiniest foothold. And I just want to divert for a moment here, as I did with the um, uh, a person with alcohol addiction or chemical addiction. Let's put it that way. Drugs as well. Anger is a much larger issue in substance abuse or even in sexual abuse than most of us realize or want to admit. In other words, there might be unresolved anger in your life and mine from our youth, parents who divorced, feelings of abandonment, lacking a sense of belonging and feeling like damaged property. And so we can carry on. And it says, we don't think we're supposed to experience this common human emotion. In fact, what we do is we go along and talk about words like frustration and, and extremely disappointed. Don't be silly. Anger is very, very real with addictions as well. Looking back, looking at our situation, we're just using different words sometimes to express the same thing, and that's called anger. And why I'm mentioning this is the fact that in our lives, we at the same time, we're trying to recover and, and process our lives towards recovery. We're dealing with the concept in Matthew chapter 7 and verse 12. It says, do to others what you want them to do to you. And so we talk about anger and how it impacts us and how we need to try and overcome that, the feeling. The dis it's a very destructive emotion. It certainly is. So we need to aggressively work this step 10 in, in really just trying to, to overcome, to overcome our addiction and move forward. Now the question is, how fast must we go with this? Well, the answer is, one day at a time is more than a handy slogan to recovery. One day at a time. In other words, the longer we work at this step 10, or this lesson 10, the better we will become at catching ourselves in the act, so to speak, and taking corrective action on the spot and staying on track. And now just to, to, to close this today, let's go back to the aspect of far less stress and far more serenity. In other words, Paul said through all of his struggles in his Christian life, which were immense 
immense unbearable struggles. He said, I've learned to be content with my circumstances. And Paul was many times under huge stress situations, but he said, I've learned to trust God more. And we learn that life is far less stressful and regret-free as we work on this step on an ongoing basis. And there was this, the Bible says to us in First Peter that there we need to avoid the war, the sinful desires, because it's a war against the soul. And that's why it says in the book of um, Mark, he says, watch and pray so that we do not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the body or the flesh is weak. Life is too short to live with regrets and remorse over what we should or ought to have done. And working this step 10, which says stay on track, stay on the rails, go ahead, straighten out, it helps us to find rest and relief at the end of every day. And so we say to each other, make amends, stay on track. And I want to close today, but which I've done before, is to recite the prayer of St. Francis, which says the following, Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O divine master, Grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. God bless you all. Now just a few little easy tips. First of all, each lesson is going to ask you to note a few personal thoughts about the question that is asked. And then read the questions at the end of the lesson, but do not attempt to answer them. Then study or read the lesson. Then answer the questions and then give yourself the opportunity to write some personal reflections. And you are more than welcome to send your answers and questions to info at nlbi.co.za